Welcome back in Harderwijk. This is Electric Felix. No more tango. No, no. Broken chargers that don't help anybody. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the V4 supercharger. Seems the Tesla crew is still here. Yes, they are. Wow, look at these stall indicators. So what exactly is going on here? Because as you can see, it shows the Tango station, but no supercharger. And here we are. Look at this Polestar. He won't be able to charge, or will he? Will they start it for him? Polestar is leaving. No access for other brands just yet. Luckily, I have a friend with a model 3. Welcome to Harderwijk. Welcome to Electric Felix. Do you see what's behind me? Thank you so much René for letting me use your model 3 and I had to tell it that I was going to the fastnet nearby because this Tesla supercharger V4 isn't even in the navigation yet. But there are some people charging. I have been preconditioning for quite a bit so let's just see what happens. And I met the Tesla team who gave me this. Gotta improvise because my microphone didn't make it here just as my wallet didn't. Luckily you don't need a wallet when charging at Tesla. So anyone can do it right? It is just a matter of plugging in. And look at how long that cable is for this vehicle. It's already showing green. Is the magic happening? Let's see what we get. I tried to preheat for at least 15 minutes. But of course, alrighty, it's working. Oh, yes. Tesla team is leaving. Their work is done. The boxes are still here, though. Ciao. Oh, but look at this. A Tesla employee just charged and I might have spotted something Tesla is not going to like so much because if a Tesla employee does this, after the first day of opening the station. What does it tell you about the future proofing? So he came and put it back. Uh, but yeah, it shows this system is very new. And I guess the cables yeah, it's very long for every Tesla that comes. So what is nice about the cable length, I guess they made it so that it won't hit the ground so much, which is neat. And as you can see, the cables follow the design of the charger, which is also neat. But then what are, what are these marks? This machine is one day old. And yeah, I don't know this. 
Uh, yeah. uh, I, this mechanism. I don't. I don't think that will. Uh, I don't know. It might be just this one. But I was told 2C. Here we are at 2D. Let's see if I take this one and I, and I put it back. It's not. It's not very obvious. It's not very obvious if you put it back right. There's no real click or something holding. I mean, there's a real click when you take it out, but not when you put it back. So the feed, the feedback is sort of lacking. But yeah, I guess, I guess this 2C stall is just an unlucky one. It also, it doesn't make the same sound when unclicking, so... Yeah, so this one, <laughs> this one will fall a lot, I'm afraid. But that might be just uh, a defect. Welcome at the new V4 Harder Rag in the Netherlands, where it is just me and nobody else at the soft launch it doesn't even show up in the navigation yet but uh, that will come pretty soon i think the lights are on action i guess this is completely normal fast charging speed for this model it's a 2019 model 3 big battery as far as i'm aware here is apparently some cooling going on for my charging session over there I don't know how good the sound is because my microphone isn't here for which I'm very sorry I'll be back though you can hear a tiny cooling sound from my charging session the rest of the cabinets is silent I really wonder how this happened that's a weird place for damage. Welcome to the V4 in Harderwijk, where I'm charging up this 2019 Model 3 that I could borrow from a friend, for which I'm very thankful. A lot of air coming from here, cold air, I might say. I mean, it's only charging at around 100 kilowatts, maybe even less by now. Some cold air coming from here as well, but more on the other side. Yeah, so it makes you wonder. These chargers are definitely friendlier to other vehicles but then yeah interestingly enough they are positioned on the right side of the parking spot not in the middle so what is that all about because i would say if you want maximum cable stretch then yeah it would be more logical to have them over there no on the left side of the parking spot I wonder I will try to bring as many vehicles as I can to this place of course as soon as they open to other vehicles which at the moment they're not the only reason I'm here with a borrowed Tesla um, but I'll do what I have to do to test this and I'll be back and I will definitely check up on what is it plug number 2C because that seems to be the unfriendly plug for now. But yeah, walking around in the Netherlands without my wallet, um, there would be a very limited amount of chargers I could think of starting right now. And at Tesla, of course, you just can start the charge by plugging in, which of course is not true if you don't bring a Tesla. And it's also why other people have to wait because access isn't granted yet 
through the Tesla app. My very first visit when Harderwijk is actually open. So happy to be here and finally be able to test these machines that I spotted just two weeks ago uh, when they weren't even, you know, they didn't look like this yet. Uh, there were only four chargers here and those were not even uh, real, real stalls yet. Two weeks later, Tesla has opened a soft opening, I would like to call it, because other brands aren't welcome yet and the navigation of this Tesla didn't show me the site but that could be just that it has to update I'm not so sure they told me I was client number four Fritz was number one and then there came two other people and then there was me all alone in Harderwijk bit sad that I don't have my microphone but I hope you will enjoy the view anyway and the sign 16 v4 stalls in all its glory charging curve still doing 90 kilowatts after 20 minutes of charging nearby Tesla superchargers show me a tariff of 48 cents during these peak hours unfortunately it's between 4 and 8 p.m. right now 6 30 about and that means I am paying a premium for the time of day that I'm charging they do shine bright. Very interesting to see this first V4 installation. I'm extremely curious where the next one will be. Will there be more coming to the Netherlands? Can I go to France and try it out over there somewhere soon? maybe Germany. Germany has a lot of fresh installations even from last year that didn't open to all vehicles yet. Mm, I'm also very curious if there will be any V3 sites that they will change into V4 um, or even V2 sites that might be changed into these. I don't think this has happened a lot so yeah in the past I mean mainly V3 sites were just brand new so probably V4 sites will also be brand new but then in many countries there are plenty out there already and if you really want to offer this longer cable to everybody then are you gonna do some replacements is the foot the same size as the old one Perhaps I will need to do some measurements next time. But yeah, I clearly I'm totally in love with this cable because look at it. It can reach the front door. Well, almost uh, <laughs> of the wrong parking spot. Um, so yeah, it gives you a lot of freedom to move. You could also you cannot now also reach a different stall. So if you're here with a Tesla and for some reason somebody is blocking that one and using the wrong cable and etc., you can use this plug from 2B to actually charge in this spot where there is 2C. So it gives a lot of freedom of movement, which I'm a big fan of course of. you never hope for sites to be blocked and here in Harderwijk I don't think it will happen a lot but if you are in places where sometimes ice vehicles and stuff in a hotel car parking lot are blocking a certain stall then yeah with these cables it could be that you can just use the other stall uh, even though this parking spot might be blocked over there yeah, you can still take this plug and plug in your Tesla at the next one. 
so if there's a stall broken and somebody blocks it, it just gives all this freedom. I wonder though, because when do I know that I put it put it back right? This, I'm really scared. Like the, the plug is way heavier than the old one, of course, even though it's still, it's amazingly light, uh, very easy to handle with one hand uh, compared to other brands of chargers and stuff where you have these super heavy, thick plugs, these CCS plugs, they can be crazy heavy with other brands of chargers. And this is still uh, Tesla style, nice and easy. It feels very different from the V3 plug though, that I used a lot. And yeah, this one, there's something here that I don't understand air coming out here is still very cold but yeah outside it's also just a couple of degrees above zero here there's less air but also a little bit that's the mechanism very simple easy does it this is still Tesla my gift and still doing 60 kilowatts so yeah will leave soon huh expect charge rate to slow all right very helpful it had to be red right I had to come here with a red Tesla and I did thanks Renee yeah with a Tesla charging is so intensely easy simply plugging in and everything goes by itself so fast. I didn't hear any weird sounds. I didn't have to look into what was happening. I just checked the car. It was already charging at its usual speed. So clearly, you know, for all these Model 3 and Model Y drivers out here in Europe, yeah, these stalls, they're simply bigger, <laughs> longer cable bit heavier plug but it's just not that big a deal uh, they look I mean the imp yeah it is the look is you can't compare this to the old one at, at least I don't think so just to show you that I'm not the tallest Dutch dude around but these charges are taller than I am uh, so yeah they uh, they shine from far away you can see them in a way that the old stalls were absolutely not uh, visible from far on the parking lot Tesla supercharger clearly it doesn't state V4 there but it doesn't need to because look at this nobody will mistake this for a V2 imagine when they introduced V3 there was no physical easy way especially not from a distance to ever notice the difference between them but look at these nobody will ever doubt they're using the last latest generation of fast chargers when they encounter these huge tall dudes of a stall 16 of them right here in Harderwijk. When will they be open to all? When can I test the Porsche Taycan, the Kia EV6 and even worse the Yonix 6 because I've been hearing some horrendous stories from France where they could not get the Yonix 6, the Hyundai Yonix 6 to charge at a V3 and I think they even tested V2 and they had all models so the rear wheel drive the all wheel drive they all didn't work at all and this is what i'm the most curious about because look at these cables they will make charging way easier for the average ev visiting and i was here last week and the tango site with their two EvaCheck chargers, just two tiny plugs, was 
overrun by electric vehicles, including Teslas and vans and electric minis, and just queuing up. And one of them is broken. So the light is on, but it's not working. I called the hotline. They couldn't even restart the machine because it wasn't online. So it didn't respond at all. They sent a mechanic, but uh, yeah, I didn't test. Who needs to test? Because we have the V4 right here. And I think there's enough juice in the Model 3. So it's time to unplug. Charging complete. Thank you, Tesla. There we go. Easy does it. So even though the vehicle just charged up at around 140 kilowatts peak, that sure heats up this baby. Thank you, Rene, for boring your sweetheart. The old Tango and the new Supercharger V4. Ta-da! It is time to go home. Maybe I should upload this right away, even before I go home. Because, yeah, there's only one first time at the V4 Supercharger. As customer number four. Yes! Last paid charging session. Hardewijk, proof! Back on two wheels. Catch you later. Thank you for watching Electric Felix. Don't forget to rent electric.